Hello and welcome back to the Wise Money School. Today I'm going to talk about the advice that I recently gave my 29 year old son about car loans. The first thing about car loans is, well, to start, you might watch the video. This is one of my most popular videos where I talk about the number one wealth killer that, spoiler alert, it's probably your car payment, your expensive car payment, your expensive truck payment. Anyway, take a look at this video because really what I like to point out is the cost of getting a car loan because I want you to have your cars paid off. Here's my car. I drive a Porsche completely paid off and I love my car, but I love it more that I have no car payment. So ultimately our goal when it comes to car payments or cars, I guess, is to have no car payment, but sometimes you need to get a loan. So I think it was like two weeks ago, my 20 year, my, my 29 year old sons called me and said, mom, my car blew up. <laughs> it hot Texas day something happened and basically the engine blew up. That car was a hand-me-down car. Both my kids got paid for cars when they turned 16 and went to college and they both have driven those cars basically in his case until the wheels fell off. So now he calls, he doesn't have the cash to buy a new car, but since, you know, call mom for some money advice, he says, mom, need to get a loan, what should I do? So here's the advice that I gave him and I call it the rule of 2310. 2310 when it comes to car loans. And what the rule of 2310 is, as I said, Kale, the rule of 2310 is this, is first of all, you wanna put 20% down. So you need to have enough cash saved for 20% down. Do you have 20%? So that's the first part of the rule is that we want to have some cash to put down on the car. The three, means that we're gonna pay it off in three years or 36 months. And where he started with me, he said, hey, I have a car, I've kind of picked it out and this is the car payment. And I said, that's great. That car payment was with, is within your affordability range, but how long is the loan? And he said, oh, it's six years. I'm like, what, six years? No, that's twice as long that you should, you know, you should only, that the max loan amount you should do is three years. That means your price, your car is gonna have to come down to make sure that your affordability is in a 36 month loan and not a six year loan. The second part of the rule of 2310 is that no loan more than 36 months. If you have to extend it, that means the car's too expensive. It really is out of budget. That's this one, three years, 36 months. Now this 10, means it shouldn't be more than 10% of your income. Your payment shouldn't be more than 10% of your income. So pretty easy. And in my money school, I get asked the similar questions when it comes to car loans. And this is 2310 of total household income. Oh, by the way. So if you have two cars, both car payments need to fit in within the range of the household income following the same rule. I'm gonna talk about, show you why 20% down, you may or may not wanna do. This one is the least important, but the 36 months means that, again, if you extend those loan payments out, you can get your payment down. But once, if you watch the video where I show you how much interest you're paying, extra interest you're paying by extending that loan, Plus you're robbing yourself of being able to invest the money into hopefully asset building versus putting it out to the bank in a loan for your car. So yeah, and then this, like I said, this last part is not more than 10% of your income. And most families are spending the total car payment way exceeds their 10% of their income. And I don't even like 10% of the income. To me, that's too much, but if you're like in the situation like my son is, he has to get a loan, so he needs to finance it. We're not gonna do more than 36 months. And yeah, in order to get a good enough car, you know, a car that's actually gonna run, he's probably gonna have to go up to that 10% mark, which I'm okay with, because it's only for three years. If it was 10% of your income, of, or up to 10% of your income for the six years, then I don't like it anymore, that's too much. But I'm okay with it for just the 36 months. Then the car's paid off, and then you get to drive that car until the wheels come off. So let's look at this. Let's break this down and see how much car can we afford uh, when we're following this rule and how we're gonna break this down. So if we look at my son's income, and let's say it's around this $75,000, what we wanna do is your monthly 
income on $75,000 annual salary is $6,250. So that's your monthly income. So if we're gonna follow this, which is 10%, not more than 10%, but up to 10%, that means you can afford a payment of $625 per month. So that's your budget, and that's for a 36-month loan. So now, if we're gonna put 20% down, we'll determine how much car can we afford. So what I did to factor all these numbers, I simply went to ChatGPT and I said, hey Chat, can you help me work some numbers? And can you tell me how much car I can afford if I can afford a $625 payment for 36 months? I looked up what current interest rates are on used cars, because I always recommend, in fact, that's what I told my son, a used car only, because so much money you know, leaves the car, depreciates right away when you drive it off the lot. So 7.25 was kind of the average rate for a used car today. So ChatGPT, I can afford $625 a month, 36 loan, 36 month loan, 7.25 interest rate, and I'm putting 20% down, how much car can I afford? So first of all, what it spit out to me was showing me that in this case, earning 75,000 a year or 62.50 a month, I could afford a $25,000 car putting 20% down. 20% down on $25,000 is $5,000 down payment, which means $25,000 car, I put $5,000 cash, and with, then that means my loan is gonna be $20,000 and it's gonna be roughly this payment. So that's how I did the math here. But really, you have two options. If you don't have the cash to put down, you can afford roughly a $20,000 car. And if you can put the 25, then you can add that down payment on top, or 25,000 that down payment, and that's gonna afford you a $25,000 car. But that's it, that's your budget. So that's the max you could go. So now, I just thought I'd do a couple other examples when we're looking at, okay, what if we're earning $100,000? And earning $100,000 is starting to put us in those upper echelon income brackets, which usually people are thinking, oh, if I'm making six figures, I can afford a luxury car, for example. So let's just see what we can afford. In fact, what do you think you can afford at $100,000 salary? So if you're making $100,000, that's roughly 8333 a month is what we're earning. So same thing, I put in chat GPT and said, okay, 10% of my income in this case is 833 per month. That's the max payment I can afford. So chat GPT, if I can afford 833 for a 36 month lease, or lease, not a lease, never do a lease, but a 36 month loan for at a 7.25 IR, how much car can I afford? Assuming I put down a 20% payment. And what this is, is you can afford a $33,500 car. The down payment would be about 6,700 here. And this is about 26,800. So again, if we're putting 20% down, we can afford a $33,000 car, meaning we have to put $6,700 of cash out of our bank account into this, giving us a loan of 26.8, which puts our payment around 8.33 per month. Again, if you go zero down, it's gonna be roughly, you can afford a $26,000 car as opposed to a $33,000 car. So is that in the luxury category? I don't know, maybe you can get a luxury car that's used for around there. But then now let's go to $150,000. Now earning $150,000 of household income certainly puts most people in the idea that I can afford probably a brand new luxury car. I want that Tesla, I want that Porsche, I want that BMW, I want that fill in the blank, whatever your favorite luxury brand car is. But let's see how it breaks down. So same thing, in this case, we can afford a payment of 12,500, which is 10% of our income. And we're going to go to ChatGPT and say, okay, how much car can I afford Assuming um, my payment is, I can afford a payment of $1,250 per month for a 36 month loan at a 7.25 IR and chat GPT just kindly spit it out to me and it broke down like this, that in this case, 20% down would be $10,000. That goes here, $10,000 is what the down payment would be. 
I could afford a $50,000 car and it would be a $40,000 loan in this case. So can we afford a luxury car at $150,000 annual salary, which is $12,500 a month? 10% of that is a payment of $1,250. And that means if we're putting 20% down, we can afford a car at $50,000, but we need $10,000 cash out of pocket to do that. And if not, we can only afford a $40,000 car. So when you look at this and break it down, I think it shows us that many of us are way overspending on our cars. And just like what I said in this one video is that our cars and our car payments are usually the number one expense that's causing us to stay broke, causing us not to move towards financial freedom because it's too much an outlay of cash. It's eating up too much of our total income between our car and our rent or our house payment that we have no extra money to start to save and invest in all those things that's required to build wealth and ultimately create that financial freedom. So to summarize all this, word to my son, to always follow the rule of 2310. And we're looking for cars as we speak to try to find one within budget. The final thing I'll say this just reminds me of another video I did that had to do with credit scores. And there's a lot of misunderstanding about credit scores. Most of us, we all have a credit score, but we don't know how it works or, or yeah, how we can increase it or why it matters. So if you click this link, it will take you to my video where I talk about credit scores, which I think is very important to educate yourself so that you can work on your credit score to always be working to make sure that we get it kind of in that upper echelon of the, the highest score possible. But when it comes to my son, he went to the bank to try to get his 2310 loan and the bank said, you don't have enough credit. <laughs> So he's got one credit card. He's not had it very long because he's still in his 20s and he doesn't want to be in debt. So he's been following like the stay out of debt rule. But because he's not had any debt, he doesn't have a credit score or enough of a credit score because he doesn't have enough length of time, along, enough longevity on his debt. So he called mom and said what? Hey mom, uh, can you co-sign? <laughs> and so that was the conversation, but I'm just gonna slip that in there because like I put in the credit score video, when we have lower credit scores, these interest rates can pop way up and the, you know, when we're extending the life of the loan and then we have a lower credit score that puts us in a higher interest rate bracket, we can see how something as simple as a car with a car payment really self-sabotages any ability to really grow wealth, financial security, and that dream of financial freedom. So thank you very much. I hope this was helpful. Please do that thumbs up. If this was helpful, please share it with a friend. Please put in a comment. I read every comment. I reply to every comment. And it just really makes my day when you guys take an extra second just to say a few nice words. Operative word, nice words. So anyway, thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next video.